to be back here in Chennai. I was here a month ago and sharing the teachings of our great masters here as Dharmeniji described. Um, I've been living in community uh, in ashrams of my guru for nearly 40 years. And I lived with people who follow spiritual teachings techniques, who followed dharma, who followed yamas and niyamas, who followed the great teacher, Paramahansa Yogananda Ji, our guru. And what a blessing to live amongst such high souls. And what a blessing to have lived with Swami Kriyananda Ji and had his blessing had his training. So what you will receive today is from them. We haven't made this up ourselves. It's from the line of great masters on things that we can do every day ourselves. I'll be speaking for some of the time and then I'll also have you doing various things. What I'd like you to do is take home with you a tool kit with many tools in it that you can practice on gaining, strengthening yourself, gaining more energy, being more magnetic, being more clear, more focused in your life. So you will be able to, after a while, I'll have you doing various practices of the great ones. It's interesting to think of some of the great souls who have helped us quite a bit in our society, that many of them, I mean worldwide, many of them, and the greatest ones, had a spiritual base, a spiritual foundation. Last week we had Independence Day, and Gandhiji was able to free India from that spiritual magnetism that he had. I think of uh, Nelson Mandela in South Africa. He was imprisoned for 27 years, but through his spiritual magnetism, even from prison, he was able to free South Africa from apartheid. I think of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr who freed America um, from segregation, who fought for civil rights for all the people there, and for all women and men, and for African Americans. 
These souls had a deep spiritual foundation. They didn't just speak or do whatever they did for society. They drew from within a power that changed the face of the earth, the planet that we're on. And I was reading recently the beautiful book of this young girl, uh, Malala. You all must have read her book. If you haven't, please do. It's so inspiring. She was only 17 years old um, when that book was written. She went through many trials. She was shot in the head. The bullet somehow didn't go through her brain and kill her. Um, and when asked why, she said, God was with me. She had a deep spiritual well that she was drawing from. And she went on to help many girls be able to go to school in her country. These are great souls that have shown the way of how we too can draw from the well of power, of magnetism, of energy that's within us. All of the masters, as we think of them, they were all supremely magnetic. And that magnetism came from God, God's power. They were able to draw what they needed when they needed, as they needed things. They were able to be amongst uh, wild animals and tame them. Uh, Yoganandaji had an encounter with a tiger where the tiger just laid down and he was able to pet him. These things don't happen every day. I've been to Kana <laughs> Tiger Reserve and I would never attempt to pet a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> but they had that from within them and then we see how these masters have now brought it to everyone. That Babaji, who we all bow down at the feet of, the great Babaji, it was he who told his disciple, Lahiri Mahashaya, that it's time for the teachings of yoga, of energy, of pranayama, of kriya yoga, of magnetism, to be disseminated to people everywhere. Before, it was maybe just yogis in caves, in the Himalayas, people able to renounce everything. And Babaji said, no, now it's time for everyone to have the opportunity to go within themselves and draw from that great well of the divine which is flowing through them. And so when Babaji met Lahiri Mahashaya in the foothills of the Himalayas, he blessed him, he gave him diksha into Kriya Yoga, which we teach at Ananda Sangha. And Afterwards, Lahiri Mahashaya for seven days was in the state of bliss, samadhi. This is his picture here on the end. What's interesting about that, even more so, is that Lahiri Mahashaya was, he was an accountant. He was married. He was living in the world. And he came to his guru. And after he was blessed by him, of course, he never wanted to leave his side. And Babaji said, no, your job is now to go and to tell everyone to spread the good news that everyone can learn these teachings now. People like me, people like you, people in everyday jobs, people with families, people with responsibilities, 
The teachings have now come down from the Himalayas and from the caves to everyone from the great Babaji and through his disciple Lahiri Mahashaya. And he told Lahiri Mahashaya, now you must go back to work. You must go back to your family. You must go back and tell all. What a blessing that that happened in 1861. And so he came back and through Lahiri Mahashaya and Swami Shri Teswarji, Yoganandaji, the different great ones, the teachings are available to everyone now. And so it was also with Paramahansa Yoganandaji that he, even as a young youngster, I don't know exactly what his age was, but his guru as well gave him diksha and Yoganandaji, he went into bliss. And when he came from that state, he fell down at the feet of his guru and Swami Sri Teswaraji picks him up and he says, that's okay, don't worry. And then he says, Mokonda, get a broom. Let's sweep the porch. He wanted to show him that the consciousness you have through your own energy, through your own centeredness, through your spiritual magnetism, you bring it in every part of your life. And there was a man, Swami Kriyanandaji met who said, my life begins when I co come home from work. I bathe, I get my dhoti on and whatever. I go into my meditation room and that's when my day begins. And you would think Swamiji would say, oh, how wonderful. But he didn't say anything because what he felt was, what a waste of your day. If you can't bring this consciousness into everything that you do. And so the time is here now when yoga these wonderful tools and techniques have been released into the world for, for all to be able to have. And I want to give you two thoughts or axioms that we'll be utilizing today. Um, one is this. These are promises. This wonderful one of Swami Sri Teswarji is this. I'm only quoting a part of it, but it's a wonderful part. Everything will improve if you're making a spiritual effort now. Everything in your life will be attuned to God as you make the spiritual effort now. And the second axiom of Paramahansa Yoganandaji is the greater the will, the greater the flow of the energy, the greater the flow of the energy, the greater the magnetism that you have. And the greater the magnetism that you have, the greater the inspiration will flow in your life. And if we look now at how basically people's lives are, they are, they are patterns. There are tendencies, there's karma, there are things that we, there are habit patterns that make up, we could say, the sounding board of our lives. This happens, we react in this way, that person says this and we don't like it. And this is the way that we respond in life. And most people think, this is the way I'm going to be my whole life. But it's so untrue, because you can change the sounding board. You can change the pattern. And if we uplift our consciousness, we begin to change the level from which we are aware. 
Sometimes uh, Yoganandaji would go to the movies. But not often, but sometimes. And, but in the movies, his eyes would be closed. And the disciples would tap him and say, but Guruji, are you watching the movie? And he'd say, yes, yes. I'm watching the big movie. The big movie, you see through the spiritual eye, you're able to uh, attain that vision, that consciousness by uplifting your, your consciousness, uplifting your, your energy level, which we'll go into in a moment. But we want to change the patterns, we want to change the backdrop, and this is possible. Swami Kriyanandaji said something very interesting that I'm happy to share with you. He said he went to many astrologers and psychics at different times, not many, but the ones he went to. He said many times what they said never happened. Wow. Isn't it? Many times what they said never happened. But everyone's rushing off to the <laughs> psychic and the astrologer. You may have found that many times it did happen. But what he said was many times it didn't happen because I have a guru and I have a spiritual path. And if you have that behind you, Things may seem like they will happen. Like Paramahansa Yoganandaji, when he was a young man, an astrologer said, it is written that you will marry three times and be a widow, widower, three, three times. And he said, that's never going to happen. He took the astrological reading, he tore it up, he put it in a paper bag, shik, <laughs> he lit it and burned it up, and it never happened. And I uh, know of a beautiful a story of uh, a woman at Ananda Village who, uh, she got a life-threatening disease. And what a beautiful story behind her. Her name was Happy. Very, and that was she, her given. I mean, she gave herself that name because she was so uplifted. She was a Kriya Yogi. She was very centered in, in the spiritual teachings. So she got this notice that she would die in a year, I think it was. And um, from the doctor. She talked to Swami Kriyanandaji and she told him what the doctor had said. And Swamiji said something so wonderful. I hope you'll remember these words forever. He said, don't go into the consciousness of the disease. Wow. So someone has a cold. Oh, I'm going to get a cold. Someone, the backache, my back hurts. <laughs> All these things don't go into the consciousness of the disease. So what consciousness did she go into? Well, she chanted. We're going to chant in a little while. She did energy strengthening exercises. We're going to do some of those. She did a positive spiritual affirmations. We'll be doing those. She went out and served other people instead of thinking and worrying about herself. I hope you're able to serve. You certainly can serve at Ananda Sangha. She was able to do many things. She tuned into the line of the gurus. She probably sang in the choir. She did many things to strengthen her, to energize her body, to magnetize her body. So in one year, she was holding firm and strong. And the doctor said he didn't understand. She kept teaching, 
other people. She kept serving. She was, kept chanting. She energized her body twice a day, the practices you're going to learn. She taught chants. She wrote chants. By year two, she was still standing strong. The doctor couldn't understand, but it's written. You were supposed to be dead. Another year passes, another year passes, five years pass, six years pass, seven years pass, eight years pass. She's still serving, she's still chanting, she's still meditating, she's still calling on the God and the Guru, she's still doing japa, she's praying, she's affirming. Nine years pass. She lived ten more years. Wow. It's incredible. Yoganandaji said, even if it's the time of death, and I'll read you more carefully what he said in a moment. He said, the appointed hour can be changed. Wow. If you're to die today, you prob probably won't have that <laughs> karma, but the appointed time can change from the power within you of the soul. That means the power, the energy, the magnetism, the will you have can change the hour of your own passing. And so these practices with Yoganandaji brought tools, techniques, methods, not only talking about what could happen. It's not enough to read. When he um, had his lectures, he had thousands of people there in the audience. And all the things I mentioned Yoganandaji, he, we didn't have the super conscious living exercises, but he did some of the energy exercises I'll do with you. He had people standing up. He had people doing chanting. An hour and a half, one chant, and people were healed. People were weeping because they were in ecstatic states. He had people doing affirmations. He had them doing pranayama. He had them meditating to change the patterns, the karma, the grooves in the consciousness. You can imagine a river or a lake, and if there's a low flow of water on the sides, on the banks, there may be debris or twigs or some branches or whatever, and if the, if the water is flowing at a, low, at a low point, everything along the banks, what will happen? Nothing. They will stay where they are. Imagine at monsoon time, when the water rises, what will happen then? When the water courses out, and that strength behind it is there. What will happen then? Everything will move. So these d habit patterns, tendencies, uh, things that pull us, pull our energy down. If we can have enough of a flow of energy, we need to enhance the flow of energy in our bodies. We need to focus the flow of energy in the body. We need to straighten also, as Dharma Rajan was saying, there's in the body the spine. We can imagine that spine. Paramahansa Yogananda Ji said something amazing. He said the spine for most people is as if it's spiritually paralyzed. The energy can't flow from blockages, from negativity, from thought patterns that are pull you down from uh, habits, various things. But if we can straighten the hose, which is what we do in yoga, yoga offers, and I mean the broad yoga, not just hatha yoga, 
but all the things I've mentioned. We straighten the hose and we turn on the water strongly. We'll begin to feel more energy flowing in the spine. I remember um, seeing when I was, went to, I also went to Africa for classes. This was way back 20 years ago. And before we went, me and another person, the people, this was in the 80s, sent their picture, the people who we were giving the classes for. This was in Nigeria. And everyone's face was like this. There was no smiles, no joy. A yogi has joy. Joy is magnetic. A, jo a yogi walks in the light. A yogi is what I mean, someone who's practicing. A yogi is walking in om vibration and, and the om sound. I'll play that for you in a moment. But they all looked this, I don't know what station they were tuned to. <laughs> it wasn't the yogic station. But it didn't take long. We were there only a month and every day we did yoga, energization, meditation, chanting, various yogic practices, and every day the eyes started to change a little bit more. Every day the smiles were a little bigger. You can't practice yoga and not smile. I would say it's impossible. This is like the super conscious living exercises. You can't practice that and I'm awake and ready. <laughs> and so every day, the glow came on more. That's the yogic glow. Every day they became more free from worries, fears. Think how, ma how many fears people have from doubts, from heavy low energy, from negativity. And by the end of the time, one man came up to me and he, he said to me, we like this. <laughs> I, I could see it in his face. I used to take the pictures of the Raja Yoga students in Gurgaon. You have to convince them more than down here in Chennai. And so I took their picture at the be beginning of the course, and sometimes it was three months long. I take their picture at the end and I would show them look at your face look how bright look how happy good the stress lines aren't there anymore look at your posture these are the things that as you practice you begin to feel more and more energy flowing the energy produces the magnetism. The magnetism draws what you need. Paramahansa Yoganandaji told a wonderful story. He was at one point, uh, he was going on a lecture campaign to teach the teachings of yoga in America. And it was expensive to do that. So I think he was going around America, not just to one city. So his, um, he told his secretary, well, I, I'm going on tour. And the secretary said, you don't have any money. And he says, I'm going on tour. <laughs> and, so, and the secretary said, but I just checked in the bank. There's only $200. And master said, but I'm going on tour. And he went out for a walk. And his eyes were just, you can see from some of the pictures, but even Swamiji said, I can never describe his eyes to you. They were like looking into the ocean, the vastness of the ocean. And wherever he went, all heads turned in America. He was, had robes, sometimes a turban, long hair, um, very strong and magnetic. I mean, his aura was huge. He said of his guru's aura, Swami Shri Tesvaraji, which means energy field, that 
He went to look for him at the train station, and he said, there's my guru. His aura is filling the whole car. <laughs> and I'm sure beyond the car. A master's aura is huge. And so everywhere Yoganandaji went, people asked him who he was and what, what he was doing. And he was a very, very great soul, an avatar. So he was walking one day in San Francisco and this was, must have been the 30s or 40s or something. And, and he was minding his own business, just taking a walk. And someone comes to, up to him and says, oh, well, who are you? And he says, you know, who he is. And, and the man says, I want to help your work. And Yoganandaji said, you don't even know who I am. And the man said, yes, I do from your eyes. Isn't that beautiful? The eyes are just so magnetic. He says, from your eyes. And the man pulled his checkbook out and he wrote a check to Master for his work for $27,000. But that's not a little bit of money. But from his magnetism, he was able to draw the help he needed from his magnetism. All the masters, uh, Ramakrishna, there's a beautiful story of his life where he would stand on the rooftops and he would just call to his own disciples. He was so, he missed them and he didn't know where they were. He was there, he was waiting and he would just say, come my own, come, come to me. And the guru's magnetism brought the great ones into his aura. And so as we um, attune ourselves to the vibrations of uh, God and the masters, we begin to become more in tune with them, more uplifted, more in the light, more in the vibration of Om. There was a disciple of uh, Yoganandaji, Dr. Lewis, who was a dentist. And I think all the Americans, are the, I mean, they were a little bit skeptical, much more skeptical than Indians <laughs> about these teachings. So he came to Yoganandaji, and uh, well, I'll tell you another story as well, since I'm on him. And he, he had, they probably had the Bible with him, but he came, he was Yoganandaji's first disciple in America. He came to him and he said, I have read here in the Bible where it says, if thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be filled with light. And that's the words of Jesus Christ. And the man, Dr. Lewis, looked at Yoganandaji and he said, do you know what that means? I've asked many people and nobody's been able to tell me. And Master said, I think so. And he said, have you seen this light that he's talking about here? And Guruji said, I think so. And he said, can you show it to me? And Doctor said, Master said, I think so. I think so. And he had him sit in front of him on the floor and cross-legged. Now, in those days, nobody sat like that, I can assure you. <laughs> but he said he tried his best, that he was not in the full lotus. He couldn't get near the full lotus, Padmasana, but he sat in front of the great one, Yoganandaji, who was probably in full lotus. And he put down an uh, asan, and they both sat on it, facing each other. And then uh, Yoganandaji talked to his, he knew this was his disciple from before, he talked to him. And I'll say what he told him. I mean, it's a beautiful statement. He said to him, Doctor, will you love me always as I will love you? because he knew that was his disciple. And Dr. Lewis, you know, he just like, 
<laughs> he didn't really know what to say. But he said something so beautiful. He said, I said yes. Because you see, I could feel the love. I could feel the love flowing. That was the magnetism of the guru. His love was pouring into him. And then Yogananda Ji went, yes, good. Now I can help you. And then what he did was, I don't know how many masters would do this, but he brought his forehead to Dr. Lewis's forehead like this. And he didn't talk to him about the light. He showed him the light of the spiritual eye, which in the practices of Kriya Yoga and this path, you're able to practice seeing the light. And Dr. Lewis, he, after Master pulled his head back, Dr. said he was so blissful, he said, and that light never left me after he showed it to me. And he showed him the light of the thousand petal lotus at the top of the head. This is magnetism from the great ones if we're open and uh, receptive those blessings just pour in but the receptivity there's always grace there's always joy there's always success there's always prosperity always flowing but we have to be aligned attuned receptive our energy up, our antenna up, so to speak, to be able to reach and draw that, those vibrations, the energy, the success into our lives. And this is what yoga teaches. So I want to stop there with this part of the talk, and I want to begin to do things with you all uh, so that I don't want to run out of time on the practices. So can you, let me read this, let me read this first before you stand. This is so beautiful about the energy. Yogananda Ji says, it is better to die if death has to come with the conviction of perfect health than with the thought that a mental or physical ailment is incurable. Though death may be the necessary end of the body according to present human knowledge, still its destined hour may be changed by the power of the soul. I'll ask you all to stand now and we'll do a few practices together. You need to uh, be not so close to your chair. Let me say this. There's plenty of room in the front. I'll ask some of you to just come up to the front area and join me here. We'll be doing some movement exercises. Uh, so you need to be able to move without moving, so hitting other people. So I'll just wait until people come forward. There's space here, at least two rows. Please come forward. Okay. Bring your hands together and rub them. If you're not able to see, I still invite you to come forward. Let's feel what prana feels like. Bring the hands like this closer together and then apart. You feel something in between your hands? Anyone? Yes. What do you feel? Vibration warmth and energy. This is called prana or life force. Can you come? This energy 
is abundant all around us and it comes in through a particular point in the body, mainly through a particular point that I'm going to point out to you now. It's called the medulla oblongata and also in yoga, the mouth of God, meaning we don't eat through the medulla oblongata food, but prana, life force, is flowing through that point. Come, turn around, please. Oh my, okay, can you hold your hair up a bit? And here at the base, I'd like you to feel this too, at the base of the brain, put your fingers there, and there's a hollow, okay? That inside is the medulla oblongata, where the energy is flowing into the brain, down the spine, out through the nerves, to the in, enliven the whole body. Okay, so I, if you would come to our meditation, how to meditate class in about a month, it's in your packet information, they will go through very much in detail everything about this. But for today, just know that we're living in a sea of energy, prana, uh, that's flowing all the time. If we straighten the hose of our spine, and we draw in, enhance the amount of energy, which we're going to do now, it will flow much more strongly and there'll be much more of it to utilize in your life. Okay, and I won't go more into that now, thank you. Now, let's, let's try this. Let's put one hand, we're going to tense our muscles and relax in this exercise. So I'd like you to try it first. Please come in over a little bit. These are all, you all are my height, so please come. Uh, yeah. Tense the muscles in your forearm. Tense low. Now tense medium. Ball the fist. Now tense even more to the virus heart. Great. Now relax, relax, relax. These are from the ancient teachings of yoga. Put both hands out. Now what do you feel? What is the hand that you just tense? Any difference? It's what? Lighter. Do you feel that? Let's do the other side. Tense, low. Now tense, medium vibration. Now I want to see the arms vibrating. They're vibrating. Okay, now medium, low. Both arms out. Feel. How do you feel? How do your arms feel? Do you feel any lightness? Okay, now why? because there's a nice, even, strong, harmonious flow of prana in the body. When you're ill and you can barely get out of bed, that means the flow of energy is not proper. There's not a lot of energy and it's not flowing properly. So we're going to do just a few exercises to draw in prana into the body and to straighten the hose. So I said the other way around. We're going to straighten the hose of the spine and turn on the water or bring in the prana for more energy, greater the will, greater the flow of energy, greater the flow of magnetism, greater the inspiration. Okay, another thing I want you to try with me before we start, we're going to use a pranayam, a double breath through the nose, double exhalation through the mouth. And we're going to put all these together in a moment. Okay, try with me. Double breath through the nose. Now exhale, double breath through the mouth. <sighs> Wonderful. E inhale. <sighs> exhale. <sighs> okay, now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to put all that together. I'm going to feel that the energy is flowing in through the medulla. It is anyway. But I'm going to increase the flow from awareness and from tension, tension, tensing and relaxing of the body and through the use of the breath. Okay, watch me once. <sighs> I'm quite strong. <laughs> if you had any doubts from 40 years of this, <laughs> Yoganandaji would have people these big policemen, I'm not going to ask anybody to <laughs> try this. 
he would have them come up on the stage and try to push him over. And they would push. He said, you're not pushing hard enough. They push. They, you're not pushing hard enough. That's all you've got. And then he would just go, boom, boom. They would just fall off the stage. We won't try that today. So, <laughs> OK, so we're ready to try this. This is the whole body. We're going to tense as we inhale with a double breath. We're going to exhale and relax. And the purpose is to draw in more prana, to flood the body with prana and energy, and thus make it more magnetic. OK, try with me. Inhale, double breath. Tense low, tense medium. Now vibrate your whole body. Exhale through the mouth, double breath. Relax, relax, relax. If you have any ailments, if you're feeling dizzy at any point, please sit down. OK, let's try again. Inhale. Tense. Or just stay at low tension if you need to. Tense more if you can. Great. Now we felt that prana. We already did this. We, that's what's going through your whole body right now. Again, tense. Great. OK, now we're going to open up the spine more. Watch what I'm going to do. This is a fun one. I know you want to laugh. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> you can't help it. I can't either. OK, so we want the shoulders and hips to go in the opposite directions, like this. Go slow first. This will open up the hose of the spine. Twist, 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 twist. We're going faster. Twist, 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 twist. Good. Wonderful. That opens up the spine. Yes? OK, now watch this next exercise. It's so much fun. If you have a back problem, be very careful or sit this one out. I'll show it first, OK? self-adjustment of the spine. Okay, So I remember I said what Master said, spiritually paralyzed. The energy can't flow. So you want to open, 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 open. The chakras open up more and more. There's more light. There's more energy. Your aura increases. All right, shall we try? Put the knuckles, the base of the spine, move forward a little bit. Push, push in with the knuckles as you go back. Come up on the toes. Great. Move the hands up. Stay with me for the first part. Move the hands up. Push. Move your hands up. Push in. Move the hands up. Push in. Move the hands up. Push. Once more. Push. How far did you get? Three quarters of the way? Let's do the top part of the spine. Be aware, aware of your neighbor. All right? Watch. Watch me here. Because I only got to here. Maybe it's for you unless you have very long arms. You watch this. I'm going to keep this stationary and swing for the upper spine. I'm getting the whole straightened out and magnetized the upper part of the spine. OK, I see some people trying. Go for it. But just be very careful around you. <coughs> we don't want anyone with a black eye. <laughs> Do you feel that in the upper part of the spine? OK, I see some variations. Let me just tell you, this isn't it. <laughs> OK, it's this. Maybe you don't have room, but be careful. All right, the next one we'll do is walking in place and then a little bit of running. A little walking, a little running. I'm only doing about six of the exercises with you. So we did this already. Swing your arms. Oops.
day a hot day. <laughs> okay, calm your breath as you watch this next very fun exercise. Watch me do it first. It's called fencing. I'm exhaling. This is all tense. I come back and relax. My back leg is tense. This is great for the lungs, the heart. Okay, want to try? Opposite arm and leg. Forward. Ready? Here we go. Now come back relaxing. Switch. Feel that open up the lungs. Exhale. Come back relaxing. Switch. Relaxing back. Once more. This arm is tense. Great. Once more. Now freeze. Stay right there. You want to make sure you've got the opposite arm and leg forward. If not, please switch. Most everybody. Okay, great. Come back. One last time. <laughs> and it's one arm. <laughs> okay, great. Now, the last two. The stomach holds us back. We know that because we like the sweets, you know, and the heavier foods. So the stomach needs to be our friend. And if we can do Uriyana Bandha, which is pulling the stomach in and holding it for some time, and then pumping in and out an alternate of Uriyana Bandha, it will really get the digestion, the elimination, assimilation going, right? I'll, I'll show this once, but I can't show it the best way. You'll be able to figure it out. But put your hands here on the thighs, come down, with the knees, bend the knees slightly. Exhale through the mouth. <sighs> Pull in and hold. Great. Wow, when's the last time you did that? <laughs> the poor stomach. Okay, so we're going to do it again. We're just going to pull in. Oriana Banda, hold. And that's energizing the stomach area so that the digestion, elimination, everything can work better. Exhale. Pull in. Fantastic. Next time, this time, push in, pull out, push in, pull out. Are you with me? With the stomach. Exhale. <sighs> Keep the breath out. Push. Keep the breath out on this one. <sighs> Ready? Let's try once more. Same thing. Exhale. <sighs> Pump the stomach. Keep the breath out. Some people are doing a variation of Kapalabhati pranayam. Okay, we don't need that at all. There's no breath. You're just pumping in and out, in and out. Okay, that's that one. Now the last exercise is this. With no tension in our arms, we're going to extend the arms out as we exhale through the mouth with no tension. So I'm not tensing. I'm just... Now I'm going to inhale... No tension in the arms. Exhale. <sighs> Wonderful. Inhale. <sighs> Exhale. <sighs> Inhale. <sighs> Exhale. <sighs> Great. Bring the hands up in Namaskar. Now what you just learned, three or four or five energization exercises developed by Paramahansa Yogananda Ji himself. These exercises, the way I taught you today, you can do any of them. One of them, two of them, all of them, whatever. If you come to the meditation class, you can over time learn all of them. But from today onward, 
How many of you think you can do one of those? Just one. I don't know if one, is one too many? <laughs> How many people can do one of those exercises? Okay, great. So you pick the one, or you pick three, or five, or whatever. Now, um, I want to show you another yogic technique for making your aura bigger. It's already bigger from these exercises, but meaning there's a, a circle of light and protection around you. One of our members took his family to Delhi from Gurgaon. He got his little boy and little girl, they were five or six years old, out of the car and his wife. And he had in his car a car protector, which we have up there, which has a picture of Babaji on one side and a picture of Guruji on the other. He got out of his car, he's walking with his family, and he wasn't that far away, half a block. He looks back, and a big bus just went and completely demolished his car. He said, Dhyanaji, the only thing I could get out was the car protector. Now, what was that? The car protector, I mean, those masters were protecting him. <laughs> they were protecting the car. They were protecting him and his own energy was protecting him. He had just gotten out of the car. And so you can avoid disastrous things if you can keep your aura strong. So here's an aura enhancing practice, shall I say. I'll show you that Yoga Ji taught. The hands, you put them in front. I'll show, then I'll talk. Front, back, front, back, Om. Tat Sat, we say. Tat Sat, Om Tat Sat, the names of God. Tat Sat, Om Tat Sat. Okay, so as you do that, visualize all around you a strong energy coming out of your heart, that vibration of God filling your whole being. Okay, let's close our eyes now and we'll do it. Visualize light, visualize Babaji, one of the masters, flooding you with their protection, their protective energy and light. Okay, here we go. Om Tat Sat, 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 Om Tat Sat. Once more, Om Tat Sat. Now, the hands in Namaskar position, closing the eyes. Feel yourself in a magnetic light. Feel the energy current. Even if you can't feel it quite yet, you will over time. Your energy is flowing more strongly now through the spine, up to the brain. The body is vibrating with light. The cells are dancing with vitality and energy. Place your hand somewhere now where you may need some extra energy. Uh, let's rub the hands first, and we're gonna, this is healing ourselves. Put your hands on your back or your stomach or your neck, wherever, just for a moment. Feel, you may feel a vibration in your hands going into that place. Keep the eyes closed. Feel through the medulla oblongata, energy flowing into the brain, into your spine, into your arms, into your hands. Bring the hands back in namaskar. We'll do this again in a moment, but I want to try an experiment while we're standing here. Rub the hands once more because we can practice sending out a magnetic charged energy to other people. First, just hold your hands like we did at first. I want you to feel the current flowing. Now lift the hands up, close the eyes. You should feel energy vibrations in your hands. Visualize that you're a channel of an ever-flowing magnetic light and energy into your body, 
into your mind, your whole being. Now we'll just take a moment and think of one person who you want to share this vibrant energy with, visualizing them at the point between the eyebrows. Feel through the hands a current flowing out and through the spiritual eye, reaching that person. Rub the hands once more, and this time, as we do this, we'll add the chanting of Om. This is the healing technique of these great masters, Yoganandaji and the masters. Lift the hands up, keep the eyes closed, clearly see. Could be a situation, your job. Could be something, relationships, difficulties. Could be some particular person. This is a practice you can use to uplift the energy, to clear it, purify it. Let's chant Om three times together with the hands up, visualizing the person, the situation, a job, the job or whatever as we chant Om. Om. Twice more. Om. Om. Keep the hands up for a moment. You can move them up and down in space, just slowly over the situation or the person, or could be your child or spouse or relative, sending good energy, cleansing vibrations. Now bring the hands together and come to your seat, and we will do some other I'll introduce some other tools that you can take home with you today. Could someone move the table? Just move it over there, thank you. On the other side of my screen. Please sit with the spine straight. I'm going to demonstrate this because I see this happening. The bent spine is kinking the hose, is it not? So energy can't flow. You can get energy in, but then if you sit and walk like this, you can't go anywhere. All right, so bring your hands together in the back and pull back. Open, open, open the chest. Feel the spine nice and long and open. Bring the hands back, turn the palms up on the thighs. And this is a practice you can do every day. Exhale. <sighs> Inhale. That's perfect, thank you. Exhale. <sighs> Try again. Keep the back straight. Whole body is filled with energy. <sighs> again. <sighs> ah. Wonderful. Now, we're going to do a practice of chanting and chanting of particular sound of OM going up the spine, the chakras. Perfect, okay? So each chakra is full of energy, full of light, full of vibration, full of sound. You can go into this more in the classes here, but one way of magnetizing yourself is to open up more the doors in the spine of the chakras. And so this is a very simple technique. Then we'll do it with the eyes closed, and I will say where to put your attention 
please come off the back of the chair, the spine straight, okay? And then we're going to end this part with a chant. Okay, ready? So focus at the base of your spine. The Muladhara Chakra, close the eyes. We can dim the lights if it's possible. And we're going to chant this note, Om. I'll demonstrate first, then I'll ask you to join. Om. Now, at the Swadhisthan Chakra, about an inch and a half up the spine, listen to the note first. Now, sing with me. Om. Now, the Manipur behind the navel. Listen to the note. Now, the Anahat Chakra, the Heart Chakra. there in the heart. Now at the throat, Vishuddha, listen to the note first. Feel your energy more in the upper part of the spine. Now at the medulla oblongata, I just showed you where that is. Listen first. Now, at the spiritual eye, the point between the eyebrows, the seat of enlightenment, of soul awareness, the Kutasta Chaitanya. Listen first, and we'll stimulate that center. Sing along. Now, at the medulla again. gaze up at the spiritual eye. Now at the Vishuddha chakra, listen first. Oh. Feel the energy there. Keep looking up. Heart chakra, listen. Sing along. Oh. Manipur, listen to the note. Oh. Swadhisthan. for a few minutes. <laughs> Keep your gaze at the spiritual eye. Begin to simply watch the flow of the breath in and out of the nostrils. 
focus your mind there, you'll be able to learn the techniques of meditation and concentration through our classes. But for today, just focus easily, gently on the flow of the breath into the nostrils and then back out. Focus your mind to uplift your consciousness, your energy at the higher centers. Watch, follow, observe the natural flows of the breath without any control. Enjoy the stillness and calmness within. We'll do this for about three or four minutes now. Now we'll do an affirmation. I'll read it first, and then I'll have you say it with me. To clear the mind, to deepen the thoughts, to calm the emotions, and to draw the will into the very fibers of our beings to accomplish all that we need to do. Please listen, and then I'll have you join this is a very powerful affirmation by Yogananda Ji. I'll say it first. I will, with my own will, which flows from the divine will, to be happy, to be well, to be prosperous and spiritual, to be well, to be well. Now please join me line by line. We'll say it loudly, as loud as you can, and then more and more quietly, until it's a whisper and then mental. You won't need your paper. I'll be saying the words for you. Inhale, tense your body first. Exhale and relax. Once more. Exhale. Okay, please repeat after me. Close the eyes. Look up at the spiritual eye. I will with my own will. 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 Which flows from the divine will. Which flows from the divine will. Which flows from the divine will. To be happy to be well. To be happy to be well. To be prosperous and spiritual. To be prosperous and spiritual. To be well, to be well. I will with my own will. I will with my own will. Which flows from the divine will. Which flows from the divine will. To be happy, to be well. To be prosperous and spiritual. To be well, to be well. I will with my own will. I will with my own will. Which flows from the divine will. Which flows from the divine will. To be happy, to be well. To be happy, to be well. To be prosperous and spiritual. To be well, to be well. I will with my own will. I will with my own will. Which flows from the divine will. Which flows from the divine will. To be happy, to be well. To be prosperous and spiritual. To be well, to be well. I will with my own will. I will with my own will. Which 
flows from the divine will. Which flows from the divine will. To be happy to be well. To be prosperous and spiritual. To be well to be well. I will with my own will. I will with my own will. I will with my own will. Which flows from the divine will. Which flows from the divine will. To be happy to be well. To be prosperous and spiritual. To be well to be well. To be well to be well. Well to be well. To be well to be well. We'll say this other affirmation not as many times, but just a couple of times you can see how beautiful and how magnetic it is, and we'll be able to get you this affirmation afterwards. It's not in your packet. It's also the powerful words of this great master, Guruji. I'll say a line and you say after me. We'll just say this one twice. I am brave, I am strong. I am brave, I am strong. Perfume of success thoughts. Perfume of success thoughts. Blows in me, blows in me. I am cool, I am calm. I am sweet, I am kind. I am love and sympathy. I am charming and magnetic. I am pleased with all. I wipe away all tears and fears. I have no enemy. I am the friend of all. I am brave, I am strong. I am brave, I am strong. Perfume of success thoughts. Blows in me, blows in me. Blows in me, blows in me. I am cool, I am calm. I am sweet, I am kind. I am love and sympathy. I am charming and magnetic. I am pleased with all. I wipe away all tears and fears. I have no enemy. I am the friend of all. We'll close with the chant. <clears throat> the words of the Samadhi poem of Yoganandaji, an autobiography of a yogi. From joy I came, for joy I live, in sacred joy I melt again. And the, the words are here on the screen. Listen once and then you can join. Oh,
just a moment in silence. Feel the joy of your heart. Feel the energy drawing the magnetism, spiritual magnetism into your whole being. Feel your whole being vibrating with life force, vibrating with good energy, high vibrations, your soul's qualities of peace, joy, love, light. Feel your whole being blessed and uplifted into the light. Mentally bow at the feet of the great ones who have opened the doors of yoga for us to guide our lives through these techniques back to our home in the divine. Feel their blessing in your heart, mind, and soul now. Om Shanti 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 Goodbye. But I wanted to end with this. We did energy exercises, we did Om Tat Sat, we did chanting, we did affirmation, um, we did healing, prayer as well. Those are things you're to take home in your toolkit. And other things to remember as far as magnetism, just very briefly I want to say that there are magnetic hold on there are magnetic places to go to like pilgrimage places temples mandirs try to be more in those vibrations rather than um, disco or whatever the other places are we don't want to go to very much there are magnetic colors this color is very beautiful blue um, try not to wear heavy or dark colors, brown, black. I mean, you have to decide, but colors are, just think of the rainbow in those colors. There are magnetic foods. Um, I'll read you that just in a moment. But heavy foods are non-magnetic, heavy meats. Too many sweets um, are going to pull your energy down. Uh, there's magnetic music. We just played something very beautiful. No one, including myself, wanted to stop. So I would get some of the Ananda music and chants, if you can, and listen to that music. Put off the other music. There are magnetic activities, which would be yoga, coming to satsangs, things like this. Pull back more from the television, because the television is taking our energy, and depending on what you're watching, it may not be the best use of your time. And one person told me, said, Dhyanaji, I haven't been able to stop watching television, but now at least I can sit up and watch television <laughs> because my spine is straight. <laughs> so these are some things to think about. And um, Guruji said, I'll end with this, just a couple of tips on magnetism, e on exercise. Exercise until you perspire. Don't complain of stomach troubles, colds, or headaches. These are always the outcome of faulty diet or lack of physical exercise. Perform some sort of exercise every day until perspiration breaks out over your whole body. Well, we did that in here today. Your colds and other similar ills will soon disappear. 
Okay, magnetic diet. Magnetism and right diet. These are all very short. In order to have magnetism, keep your body free from poisons. If your body is filled with poisons, your energy is more or less bound up. Try to clean out those poisons. If you are clean within, then all your energy can be displayed through your eyes, your face, and your body. You must pay attention to your diet. Raw food produces magnetism, meaning salads, things like that. Coconut produces lots of magnetism. Beets, spinach, and lettuce are full of vitality and give you magnetism. Too much starchy food and protein retains the poisons in the body. Eating freely of fruits and vegetables can help you develop magnetism. Fruits are even more magnetized than vegetables. They are filled with sunshine and vital energy. Overeating is bad. Fasting is very good as it gives the stomach a rest. Your eyes and your whole body will be magnetized by the kind of food that you eat. And finally, eating spiritual magnetism producing foods and absorbing vitality producing sunshine daily, you will physically reflect God's everlasting youth, eliminating all mental poisons, partaking of the divine nourishment of determination, courage, and continuous mental effort and concentration, you will learn to overcome the most difficult problems with ease, eliminating ignorance by constant meditation on God and following the precepts of Yogoda and your spiritual teacher, and you will attain perfect spiritual health. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.